Hi everyone, James Mantle here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, you guys, I decided today, since I'm in a brand new setting, I'm gonna start a brand new project. I wanna do like a series of iconic blondes. Yes, I've always wanted to do something like this, so I thought, why not start with the most iconic blonde of all? That's right, we are doing Marilyn Monroe. We're gonna create the pinnacle, the most exact, the most bestest Marilyn Monroe wig that we can do, you know, within our means right now. So I have here a blonde lace front wig. It's from Jane's Mansfield Beauty. This was our Mansfield blonde. It hasn't returned as of yet, but if there's a demand for it, she possibly could. All right, now let's put her on the head. Now, I am so excited to do this because Ernie actually gave me this idea because he says, you're always drumming on about these iconic blondes. Why don't you do something about it? So I am, I am going to create Marilyn Monroe's signature hairstyle. So this is going to be like an evergreen tutorial for any of you folks who want to attempt a Marilyn Monroe style, all right? Now, I'm not going to say it's the only way to do it because there's a million different ways to achieve this, but it's just the way I do it. First things first, I'm going to get her pinned down and I'll be right back. <laughs> all right, we are back. The wig is now pinned on the head. So let's get started. Now, the Marilyn Monroe is like a comb over, just like a finger wave comb over what I notice whenever I style it especially when it comes to like doing it for queens, the more you maximize this area, the better. And I'm going to stop right before the tracks begin on this part, like right here, where those tracks begin and you start to like go into like the railroad tracks, that's where you're gonna stop, all right? Now let's pull that down, cause she got like a real, real severe part. First things first, we're gonna start by rolling it. Now these rollers are the only ones you really have to like be precise with and they're all gonna be going that direction. Oh, I have to tell you, I am so excited to do Marilyn Monroe. Now I know in the past I have mentioned that I wasn't the biggest fan of Marilyn Monroe, but sometimes we're a little bit of a fibber. If I have to tell you the truth folks, I was obsessed with Marilyn back in like high school as many gay boys are. I had my phase where I had my Marilyn phase and I had to know everything about her. And it's one of those things where like when you're younger, you kind of like get a little more jaded. And I just thought to myself like, wow, like her life is so tragic. Like it's really kind of depressing. It like depresses you, her story. Cause it's more or less, you know, the cautionary tale of Hollywood and how people basically used her and used her up. She left this world feeling very, very alone, which like is really depressing but also is kind of the story for a lot of the Hollywood blondes. But Marilyn always stuck out to me because she was sort of regarded as like the archetype of that 50s blonde, like pinnacle, full on like pinup cheesecake looks, but had like a tragic beauty to her that people really obsess over. Like people that are really into Marilyn Monroe, they are really into Marilyn Monroe. We are doing this old school, baby rollers and a full-on roller set. I'll show you what it looks like as soon as it's all rolled up because the roller set's the most important part. Like imagine how long this had to take in those studio days, like 20th Century Fox. Those girls had to be sitting in those chairs for hours getting their hair and makeup done. And like the way they looked on camera, the hair is pristine. Like I dare you to find a break in that hair. Like those hairdressers were not messing around. Like if you look at like Marilyn Monroe, Jane Mansfield's hair in 20th Century Fox or like Jane Russell and all those girls, it was solid shellacked finger waves. Like they were not playing. And 20th Century Fox was very like, you know, Technicolor dream. So everything had to be like pristine. It was, they were selling fantasy, baby. All right, now this is the only part I'm going to roll on camera because it's the only part that's really precise. The back section is your standard going backwards roller set. That is the front roll section. That's how it should look. Now I'm gonna roll the rest, steam it and dry it, and I'll be <laughs> right back. All right, we are back. Now I have the hair all curled and dried. This was the pattern in the back, just in case you needed to see it. Now we're gonna start some cutting. So what I'm going to do is just cut a little bit here and taking into consideration that I'm gonna be teasing the hair. So I'm not gonna to cut too much off, otherwise it's gonna to be too short. So angle it like that. So teasing it down. But I have to say like the one I'm basing this off of has to be Marilyn Monroe in Niagara. My absolute, well not my absolute favorite, but one of my main favorites. As far as like 20th Century Fox Fair goes, that's my favorite one because she's evil in it. And she looks gorgeous. Like just that iconic picture of her in the pink dress with the tie up, which is the dress I'm wearing right now from Pinup Girl Clothing in white. Girl, 
I live. And she's like leaning back and like she's got those gold hoop earrings on. She looks so beautiful. We're talking icon-ish when it comes to that. Like Niagara, one of her finest. And she's so pretty. And for the most part, like she always had short hair. Like there's only one I can remember where she had long hair and it was um, The River of No Return, which isn't a great movie, but she looks so pretty in it. And she's got like her hair up in an updo a lot. And she's got this really long blonde fall going down her back. Like it's like to her butt how long the hair is. I could geek out over Marilyn Monroe all day long. I watched all those documentaries about her. And I remember I used to watch it all the time. I got it at Best Buy in the special interest section, if those of you remember that. And it was a box set of Marilyn Monroe. You got like hometown story and a little documentary about her life that was narrated by John Huston, <laughs> you know, director of The Misfits. And ugh, it was the most boring documentary in the world. But it was definitely made in the 60s and shown on TV, one of those kind of fairs. But I just, I adored it. Like I suffered through it because I just wanted to know everything. It didn't spill a whole lot of tea. Like he had to wait for like the BBC documentaries to get that. And Arena Blondes by BBC, they were the best ones because they did not hold back. They would find like your school teacher and talk to her about you. You know, like they didn't hold anything back. They overturned a lot of stones. All right, so for the most part, I'm just cutting and teasing. I'll be right back when it's all teased up and we'll work <laughs> on the front. All right, I am back. Now, it's time to take down the front rollers because this is actually a very important part of the hairstyle. So let's just do that right now. Right now, I'm gonna start by clipping some hair. Like I said, leave some length because we're gonna tease it. An angle like that. Now this I'm teasing upward because it has to cover all of this. So now for those of you youngins out there that don't really know Marilyn Rose's career like that, I'll explain it to you. In the 1950s is when she was really at the height of her fame. She was really kind of a phenomenon. Like she was a cultural moment. Like imagine like, you know, a Kim Kardashian or someone like that. Like someone who's very, very much making a cultural impact at this time. Like everyone's talking about them. They're obsessed. Like everyone's like, oh my God, she's so gorgeous. Cover of all the magazines, all the gossip rags talk about her. That's the level of famous this woman was. Like people clamored in the streets whenever she made an appearance. Like she couldn't go to the grocery store famous is how famous she was. And what was so interesting about her is like, you know, she was an orphan. And she had a very, very, very rough childhood. Like her childhood is really, really sad. In and out of foster homes, abuse, like all sorts of really dark stuff she encountered as a little girl. And you know, it's that common story with a lot of Hollywood actresses that have a similar story where they found their escape in cinema. And with Marilyn, a lot of her look was molded after another tragic blonde, Jean Harlow who was also a, quite a phenomenon in the 20s. Like people were really obsessed with her, but she died rather young at the age of 26. Like she got very sick and died and it was really tragic. But she was known for being this breathtaking blonde that had her career cut short. A lot of her beauty is not what you call natural. Like she had had plastic surgery, like she had her nose done and it was life changing, like she looked completely different from how she originally looked with the brunette hair and everything. When she was partnered up with Whitey, her makeup artist, she found her signature look. Like there was a whole Marilyn kind of aesthetic that he had basically come across and she used him for everything because he just captured her face. And what was so interesting about that is like back in them days, like you painted for the camera. Like they completely had all these tricks to contouring and things that are still used to this day. Like Marilyn Monroe's biggest trick that Whitey did was the black under the eye, like pulling it out right here to create a shadow of a lash to make your eyelashes appear fuller. Like just the things they did, like little tiny tweaks to make people's makeup, like add features to their face that weren't there. But she was a cultural phenomenon in the 50s. Like people were obsessed with her and her personal life. And she had a very like highly publicized personal life. She was married at one point to a major baseball star, Joe DiMaggio. Loved her so much, but they just did not work out. They were completely different people. Like he wanted a girl that was more of like buttoned down, wanted to be a housewife and have babies. And Marilyn still wanted to have a career. So that didn't work. And also had an issue with jealousy. Cause like studios be pulling stuff cause they did not like the fact that she was married to Joe DiMaggio. Like they didn't want their stars married. They wanted them single so they can put them on studio dates with their other stars. Cause it was all a big machine. So the fact that she was married bothered them because they couldn't utilize that publicity aspect and she's the most famous person in the world. Some might say that 
that marriage was sabotaged, especially on the set of The Seven Year Itch, where several takes were done of Marilyn Monroe standing over the wind grate and the wind brushes up and blows her skirt up. That's not even in the movie, by the way. Like, you never see anything past her knees because there is no way you're getting a panty shot in a 50s film. Excuse me with that Hollywood code? No way. They did it so many times because they wanted to upset Joe DiMaggio. Every biography says that, it's alleged. They were doing this just to egg him on. Not to mention the fact that like the promotional material for that movie was a giant Marilyn Monroe cutout, put on the side of a building of her skirt flying up. <laughs> it's understandable why he got upset. So yeah, that marriage did not last long. Although he did love her and until his death, he would leave flowers on her grave that's like always those little stories about Marilyn Monroe that fascinate me. Cause like there are a lot of little quirks to her career that are really fascinating. And also like a lot of really sad examples of like how Hollywood just disposed of women and like didn't really seem to care. Like my favorite movie, Some Like It Hot, is even marred with terrible stories about how she was treated on set. Like she was pregnant while she was filming it. And the story goes is that she famously lost her baby because she was made to retake over and over again, running on the beach. Like they did it so many times and she ended up losing her baby from it, just running on the hot summer beach over and over and over and over again. And they were really mean to her, like very vicious stories about her from her co-stars. And the press just fed into it because Marilyn Monroe being a mess was money. And it's like a really great example of like how sick journalism was and how vicious they could be. Like tabloid journalism, they did not care. It's like it sold a paper. What's the craziest thing is, is like, it still hasn't really changed. Like paparazzi and tabloid journalism, like they still do that where they like really go hard on celebrities. Like I remember witnessing it firsthand that like, you know, Britney Spears, like the height of just like trashing women. Like it was really just common practice and everything did it. All right, now I am going to finish teasing this and I'll be right back and we'll start <laughs> All right, we are back. Now it's time to start smoothing and styling. Now I'm basing this off of like several pictures I've seen of her hair to get like a composite of what her hair is like. Now, if I'm correct, it usually does like a swirly bit like around here and it breaks off, like her hair is more in breaks. It's not like a solid piece, like a Jane Mansfield or anyone like that. But it definitely had like a signature flair and style to it. Jane was always very, very pristine in how it looked like it looked like a helmet. And Mamie was more longer and more sexy. And Diana, depending on what it was, like if it was young Diana, like in the 50s, baby, it was like shoulder length, almost helmety, but it had movement, like lots of movement down here. Like they all had their signature looks. like. A lot of people write them off saying the blondes all copied Marilyn and had nothing to like show for themselves. Not the case. Like they all had their own thing and those who are true fans of old Hollywood and especially old Hollywood blondes know the differences. All right. And I'm happy to school you on it because this is our blonde series. Like Marilyn Monroe is vulnerability, fragile, but strong at the same time, if that makes any sense. Like she represents a whole different kind of like independent, strong woman owning themselves and creating, you know, an image of themselves to replace bad memories, which is a big theme on this channel of like actresses and women that I love. Those who like recreate themselves into an image they want to be. And like for the most part, like I do mention that like, you know, studios are very awful and they did use a lot of her, but she did have a lot of agency in what she did. Like she was very savvy in how she used her fame. I think one of my favorite stories is actually how she got Ella Fitzgerald into a club because she wanted to hear her. And back in those days, like Ella Fitzgerald was not allowed to play in certain clubs because she was a black artist and certain clubs just were not having it. They're like, absolutely not. But Marilyn told them like, hey, if you have her play there, I will be in the front row of the audience every single night and you can take as many pictures of me as you want to promote your club. So they booked her and Marilyn honored that commitment and she was in the front row every single night just having a blast. And it honestly opened a lot of doors for her to get in and be seen. And I love that, you know, that's using your privilege in the best way possible, opening doors for other people. Cause like she knew in the back of her mind, like you're not gonna replace me. She's like, I'm the most famous woman in the world. Like, what are you gonna do? Like she could own herself at certain times that are like really, really 
fascinating and cool. It's just the way she like navigated herself with fame. And you look at that, like it's starting to look a little more PC like I told you. Like this little bit right here, like curling and curving up like that, that's very important. And like curling under like that. Like I said, it's a little messy, but it's like a structured mess. Like it's like she just rolled out of bed looking that fabulous. And the back, you wouldn't believe how hard it is to find a picture of the back of Marilyn Monroe's head. Especially from the time frame I'm looking at. The back is more sculpted down the back and then a little more wild and free at the bottom. But going down, it's more of like the makings of a page boy, but unfinished. Like definitely you can tell certain days when she was doing her own hair. If you look at like studio films, the back is always pristine. Like it's usually done up into like a beautiful page boy. Like there is a lot of people invested in making Marilyn Monroe the package that she was. Like she sought out the finest acting teachers, she had sought out the best hairstylist, best hair makeup artist. Like she want, she had an idea of what she wanted to look like. Like as soon as she found that look, she stuck to it and worked with them to evolve it. Like you look at her in the 60s before she died, you can tell like she was going into more like an elegant, almost like the blonde Audrey Hepburn route. Like she was getting very stylish and very chic. Like in Something's Got to Give, the clothes they designed her, you can tell the studio had a direction of where they wanted to take her. Like it definitely was going more towards like, you know, a Kim Novak-y kind of direction. You know, the star of rom-coms and thrillers and things like that. Like there were plans for her. Like just certain movies that were planned for her to do that she didn't end up doing. Like The Stripper, that was supposed to star her. And you can only imagine what that movie would have been like had she been in it. And like the only reason that didn't happen is well, because she tragically died. And even right up to her final film, Something's Got to Give, like she had been fired off of it, but they hired her back. Like they're bringing her back for it. Just they fired her to teach her a lesson. And it seemed like it would have been a really great, you know, step in the right direction for her because she was really in a rough patch in her life. But you know, depression and addiction took its toll on her and eventually won. And I'm not even gonna get into those crazy ass theories about the Kennedys. Like those of y'all who are truthers, hats off to you, but I'm not, I'm not touching that. One of my favorite genres in Marilyn Monroe's career are bad Marilyn Monroe biopics, and there have been a lot. Like Goodbye Norma Jean in the 70s, the exploitation one that was like shown in drive-ins, starring Misty Rowe. Could you get more of a drive-in like, <laughs> classic actress than Misty Rowe? My God. Or um, what was the other? There's so many. Oh, my absolute favorite one of Marilyn Monroe biopics. It's by HBO in the 90s, and it was a duo actress combo for who's playing Marilyn. They had Ashley Judd playing Norma Jean Marilyn, like brunette Marilyn, before surgery. And then after surgery was portrayed by Mira Sorvino right after she won an Oscar. And when you watch it, you like think to yourself, how did she win an Oscar? <laughs> it's not her finest hour, I will say that. But like hats off to her for taking on such a role because the script in it is bonkers. Like how did she not read this and think like, what the hell did I sign on to? And HBO is always like one of the worst ones when it came to like celebrity biopics. Like they pulled no punches and would sometimes just flat out make up stuff or like take things that were rumor and just treat them as fact just to pad the story. Like they didn't hold back. Like it's campy and really enjoyable, but it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and almost like disrespectful to Marilyn because they make her seem like she's schizophrenic or something. Like Mira Sorvino, when she's being portrayed by her, she has visions where she's arguing with Ashley Judd like she's a separate person in the room. It's bizarre. And there's like a sequence where when she transforms into Marilyn, she backs up her car and, and runs over the little girl version of herself. It's bananas. But I do recommend checking it out because it will entertain you. It is like good trash TV movie fodder. It is not very telling or informative on who Marilyn Monroe was as a person, but they definitely were having fun with the material. That's for sure. All right, now I just have to do some trimming and a little bit of smoothing, but the hair is fairly much there. Like look at the front, like Marilyn has arrived. All right, now I'm gonna smooth and I'll be right back with the final <laughs> Welcome back, this is the final result. Oh my God, yes! <laughs> I love this dress in white. I look like a sexy evil nurse. Like, ooh, I'm up to no good. Here's your medicine. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm so happy I could bring to you my interpretation of the classic Marilyn Monroe style, like signature 
This is what you think of when you think Marilyn Monroe. I love it. It's like an illustration. Oh my God. Now, I'm so glad you guys joined me on my first installment of my iconic blondes series. Let me know down below if there's a certain blonde you want to see me attempt. Whatever you'd like to throw my way, please let me know. I always keep an open mind. I have to take a moment, a then moment where I think everyone has tipped me on then now. I would like to thank Sergio, Ulysses, and Lydia. Thank you all so much for the tips on Venmo. Now, I had a blast doing this and talking about Marilyn Monroe. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, bye. Now hit the outro. Click here and see me put my straight friend in drag. Or see how I got duped by Amazon. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, you're going to end up on forensic files. So click it.